V101, your man Big Al in the building. Always good to have folks come into the studio, man. Dion Taylor is in the house. Ooh, ooh. Super duper director extraordinaire. Man. And uh, he's got a new movie. Oh, by the way, got a special guest on the on the on the phone, man. Live from London. My man Tyrese, how you doing, brother? T Weezy. I'm good, baby. I'm hey. here. I'm here. So they're doing hey, man, a- you know, I feel at home. You know, Ca- Cali, Sacramento. We need y'all, man. Like we we not even playing with nobody. <laughs> Sacramento, we need y'all to show up. Like right now, there's a pre link. For the pre-sales that just went live uh, for for the black and blue movie, you don't want to be showing up with you and your girl sitting in the back left corner <laughs> with a seat that don't recline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to get into that just a little bit, man. The pre link how you can get to go see this movie, man. But I want to talk about the movie itself, brother. Yes. So, Dion, man, <clears throat> for those who are uninitiated, talk about this movie, man. Yeah, so uh, we have a film called Black and Blue, man, which is... Um, one of the most important uh, films that I've ever made in my life. Mm. Um, and I was blessed enough to have the incredible Tyrese and uh, Naomi Harris star in the film. Wow. But the movie is a, um, it's an incredible action thriller uh, that has an important message in the middle of it, which is be the change. Mm. Um, and we've been all over the world right now promoting the film, man, London, New York, uh, all around the South. I'm heading to Chicago right now. Um, it's an important film, and it's one of those movies that that has weight and substance that everyone needs to go out and support because it's for us, by us. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. number one. But number two, we don't get to make movies like this anymore. Right. Um, and like I said before, if you're a fan of Training Day, if you're a fan of Sicario, if you're a fan of those movies that really make you move emotionally, this is the one for you. So yeah. this is really like the Friday night, take a date, get the popcorn, and get your head blown off, right? <laughs> Walk out of the theater and have something to actually talk about. You know, On the that, car ride home. Yeah, nowadays, man, you make these movies and they're like, I mean, you watch a film and, and within 10 minutes of walking out the theater, you forgot what you're seeing. Here's the thing, to be honest with you, man, me and Dion ain't talented enough to sell y'all on how important this movie is. We're, we're not talented enough to, to put words to what you're about to experience. Mm. We just need y'all to show up. And for all you folks out here that showed up for that chicken sandwich <laughs> uh, and was waiting in line for four hours for a sandwich, we already know what y'all going to do. Tell them. Y'all going to show up to support black and blue. Tell them, brother. We need Tell that, man. Preach, with, man. With cheese. Preach. With cheese. Yeah, man. So With cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, man. Hey, Tyrese, how cool was it to do this type of movie with the stars and Dion and talk about a movie that has this type of a message, man? Talk about that that process, man. How did you feel about that? I mean, you know, there's a reason why there's certain backlash and controversy surrounding the movie. The truth is always uncomfortable. Um, and that's just what it is. When you peel back all the layers... And and I wanna I wanna say this because it should be said to make mm-hmm. sure that we are doing things the right way. This this movie is not to create any additional friction and tension towards police officers that are out here doing wrong. And it's 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 irresponsible to to say that all police officers are bad or have bad intentions. We're just basically saying there is a such thing as a police officer who loses sleep at night because of the things that she's seen Mm. are being exposed to that's actually going on out here in these streets. And, um, you know, when you're able to run to the human resources department and and, and actually report corruption and report Mm. that your, your, your officer that you riding around with is engaged in corruption or, 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 you know, abuse and, and police brutality, um, you know, so that's what this movie is all about, man. It's a real story. Um, you know, New Orleans specifically is coming off of a lot of controversy because of the corruption that's happened with the mayor, yeah. the police force, the mm. police chief. Um, and to be able to put a camera in there and capture it the way Dion did, is, is going to take people on the ride. And I'm just honored to be a part of this, man, because I'm from the streets. I'm from Watts. I'm from South Central. Yeah. And I'm from Cali, so Sacramento, 
What we doing, baby? Like, there's nothing else that matters on October 25th than black and blue, period. For sure, for sure. And so especially with what's going on in Sacramento with the whole Stephon Clark thing and all that, it's really a pivotal moment for Sacramento to see this movie, man. Yeah, I thought that um, that's one of the things that I was highlighting actually in London and in New York was the Stephon Clark issue, which was basically saying, you know, without, like I said, without preaching – the reality is there's a there's a there's a female police officer in this film yeah. who basically witnesses something, sees it with her body cam. Right. And basically she decides not to conform. And I was drawing a parallel line of that because outside of Stefan Clark, which happened right here, with damn near thirty shots. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What I was comparing was all over the country we've had all these young people be killed by the hands of cops. And the reality is Behind most of these cops that's doing the shooting is six, seven, f- ten more police officers. Mm. If one police officer felt like, yo, what I just seen wasn't right and said something, we wouldn't be in the predicament we're in with all these cases. So the reality is, although we know that's a very, very hard line to cross, it is a human line. Yeah. And at some point, we got to get back to people being human and people actually saying something when they see something. And that is going to break the black and blue line in the streets. Because now we go like, damn, okay, well, this cop, you know, when you was choking Eric Gardner, the four officers behind him was like, yo, I walk by this dude every day. I seen him selling loose cigarettes. Right. Right? Why y'all kill him? Right? If someone actually says something, and that's all we want right now. We want a community now where people actually get up and are vocal. When you see something wrong, you say something wrong. And it's interesting now because right now we have this whole whistleblower thing going on politically, right? Right, right. Well, that's what it's about. Whistleblower is someone that sees something that's happening completely wrong that could affect you, Mm. right? And if you see something wrong in the streets that could affect the community, you need to say something about it. So Black and Blue is really, really dope, man, in that way that it has that switch. It has that moment in there where it's like, damn, we got a message in here. But like I said, just like The Intruder, if you've seen that film, you was on the edge of your seat, you were screaming at the screen, you was like, this, this man crazy. <laughs> when you go see this movie and you see Tyrese's performance, first of all, we have to remember Tyrese was hand-selected by John Singleton. Right. This is one of, the, one of our greatest icons that we have in, in film, right? So first of all, he laughed at this all time. He has one name. <laughs> he has one name. So right, right. he has one name. So you know you're somebody. Many yeah, you know you're somebody. somebody. When you could just walk in the airport and you got one name, he don't even show his ID no more. <laughs> Anyways, outside oh <laughs> outside of that. So hey, so do you, do you <laughs> have that with TSA Tyrese? You just show yeah, your he ID. He just be like Tyrese. He just walk up and say Tyrese. <laughs> and they let him in. I seen it. <laughs> Man, you somebody, brother. You somebody. You somebody, Tyrese. <laughs> but no, outside of his performance. And what Naomi Harris leans to the film, and then Mike Coulter, who was played Luke Cage, mm-hmm. Nefessa Williams, who's on Black Lightning right now. I'm telling you right now, man, it's one of the most prolific films of this year. And I'm not just saying it because we made it. I'm saying it because we have screened it now for thousands of people. Mm-hmm. We have understood what the audience reacts to. They really love it. We're out supporting and pushing it. And right now, I'm just coming home because I'm like, yo, I really, really need the city, man, to get behind the movie, you know, and, and, and Tyrese is right. I mean, we laughing about it now, but it's funny, man, when you see these things like a chicken sandwich or, you know, whatever the, the right, latest trend right. is and you like, man, this is crazy that we get behind things like that. But this is one that we really, really, really need to get behind. This is an important film man, and it's dope. And when you make movies like this and they work, they allow you, the studio system allow you to make more movies like this that really have messaging mm. versus buffoonery right so it's right. like oh you want more you know your people jumping off the top of the building splitting their head open and or do you want movies that actually say something and mean something for the culture and this is what we're trying to push and tyrese you 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 really made your mark on this movie man for yes, real. yes he did well listen i i don't i don't want to call out no names but i do want to re-emphasize that thought we got enough buffoonery happening out here yes sir. no sir Nope. <laughs> got enough of that going on. Right, right. <laughs> Y'all got to keep in mind that every slave movie that comes out that does over $100 million, the movie studios want to make more slave movies. And, okay? we got, and we got way more to offer than that, right? Man, we got, we the, got so much more yeah. to offer 
How many more movies are we going to be the nanny, the butler, and the slave? How many more? When you show up for these type of movies and they do really well in the box office, they want to keep telling that story, keep selling that narrative, because in their mind, they keep they need to keep highlighting us as being less than. Mm. The black and blue movie needs support yes. because it sheds light on what's really going on, what's really affecting our people, what's happening every single day. And people don't think about this, but one of the most infamous beatdowns in history, and I was in Watts, living in Watts, and had the National Guard on my street with real rifles and guns, okay? I was in the hood, still living in Watts, when the Rodney King beating went down. I was still living in the hood when the O.J. Simpson situation went down. Yeah, I was running through yeah. the hallways when O.J. Simpson got off. I was in the riots for the Rodney King beat. And body cams did not exist back then. Right. That was somebody who rolled out of bed with their camcorder and got footage of Rodney King getting beat. And then it showed and up on the, it showed up the, the 10 o'clock Rodney news King at that point. Mm -hmm. pool. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Rodney King drowns in a pool? Really? <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. So this movie right here is one of the movies. That's why it's controversial. That's why everybody's buzzing about it. That's why everybody in the hood is fired up. They ain't been fired. Look, all my I don't want to say the N-word on the air, <laughs> but all my guys from the hood is texting me saying they ain't been fired up in the hood on this level since Minister Society. Wow. Since Baby Boy and since Straight Outta Compton came out. Real Everybody serious. in the hood is fired up about this because this this is reality. This is now. This is this is what's going on in the hood right now. This is this is what we live every day. Very powerful right there, man. Yes. Tyrese and Dion hanging out here. Listen, we're talking about black and blue. The movie comes out on October twenty fifth. October twenty fifth. Yeah. So so talk about this whole I mean the response, I see you guys on your Instagrams at Tyrese and at Deion Taylor. Yeah. Um, and you make sure you check it out. But so many examples of how it's been well received, man. Yeah, well that's the that's the that's the great thing about film. You know, outside of messaging and whatever it is you want to tell people, the good thing, man, is to have people have escapism. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's why you make movies. So some of the greatest movies you've ever seen, you know, allow you to escape into that world where you're like, Man, I love this, you know? Yeah. And um Fans are really excited about the movie, man. The audiences are reacting. As a matter of fact, we had on Tyrese's page what we showed, we had 47 screenings all over the country. So what happens is when you have these screenings, when those screenings are over, those 220 or 250 people, yeah. they walk out and they get a paper and it says, did you like this? Did you not like this? Did you love it? Was it incredible? B basically, those are the things on the page, right? Yeah, yeah. Out of all 47 screenings, the movie received excellent in 47 different markets. Wow. That means wow. that 240 people walked out of theaters all across the country and wrote, I loved it, excellent, I want to see it again, or I'm going to tell my friends I want them to see it. And when you get that, man, that's like that's not normal. You know what I mean? Right. And right. what happens a lot of times in Hollywood, and I'm, you know, I'm always deciphering things for people because I'm an independent filmmaker. Right, right. <laughs> and I want right. y'all to know what happens, man. Translated. But, but what happens is normally most of the movies that you see in the theaters, they are not getting great reviews. They are not good movies. People are are saying, I would not recommend this, but because there's so much money behind those films, they don't let you see it. They do more promotions, and then they let you discover opening weekend. Oh, man, this ain't even good. Right, right. right. And now you've already right, spent well, your see, money. So when you Dion have a movie that's... Being, Dion is being politically correct. <laughs> Let me keep it all the way one. Come on, brother. Come on. Preach, man. Preach. Listen, the beautiful thing about social media is that people are able to cut and paste their picture. You see a trailer, and they're able to grab some of the best elements and moments in the movie. Right. Put it into a three-minute clip. Get you excited. You and your wife go spend money on a movie. And then you're on your way home mad as hell that you spent your money on trash. Right, right. So when Dion is talking about what studios never do, we're giving y'all the inside scoop. And we're making y'all aware of what's really going on. We're saying that when a movie is trash and the movie studio know it's trash, 
They don't want no one from the press and media, especially the general public, mm -hmm. to see the movie. They want you to go see the movie based on the movie posters and the trailer because they want you to get excited about trash. And then once you show up to spend your money on the trash, it's too late. They got your money. They got your money. So the fact that there were 47 advanced screenings in all of these different states for the general public and all of these screenings tested excellent, that those are called buzz screenings because they want the word to get out. For all 150 to 200 people, 250 people that attended these screenings, they're going to leave texting, calling, tweeting, social media, letting everybody know why they love this movie so much. And this is something that never happens. So you're getting, you're getting, the, real, you're getting the real from Tyrese right now, man. So, Dion, you said there was also another <laughs> record being sent the first time in history about this movie, man? Yeah, you want me to tell you again? Come on. Let me tell you what the record is. Everybody buckle up. Get your seatbelts on. All right. All right. This movie is the first film ever to have a black female lead star in it as a police officer mm. in cinematic history. That means out of a hundred years of movie making, right? Over four million movies. Dang. Okay. There has never been a film that had a black female lead play a police officer. Now, if you pull that back and really think about it, how many cop movies have you seen in your life? Wow. How many, how many book them denos? Right? How many, <laughs> right, how many, right. how many cop things have you seen where you go like, damn, that's crazy? I feel like that alone, I feel like that alone for the culture, for the people. And when I say the culture, I mean everybody that's living the life that we're living. Right. You right. know what I mean? That's not that's not that's not gender or race baited, right? That's like, yo, the culture is everybody that's inside this bubble that we're living in. We're right. all going through this political thing right now. We're all trying to make ends meet. Everybody's like out here scrapping and fighting. But when you really be like, damn, I'm gonna go support a film and see a movie, that's one of the things where you like, I gotta go get behind that one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and that was one of those big things for Black Panther, which was we had never had a superhero. Right. right. So so now everyone was like, oh, we got to go. This is that. You know what I mean? Mm. I don't think it'll be to the magnitude of that because that obviously Marvel with two billion dollars in marketing and advertising. Yeah. Yeah. But what I am saying is this is one where we need everybody to get out there and support the film. Go get around the movie, rally around the movie. And what we're going to do, which I'm going to announce probably tomorrow, we're going to buy popcorn, soda and candy for everybody in the country opening night. Wow. You ain't never heard that, right? I ain't never. Bam! You what? ain't never heard that. <laughs> yeah, we doing it for real. Because you know what? We know it's hard out here, man. Yeah. And the reality is what we doing is we want to make sure we drive the ticket sales and get it up. So in the next four or five months, if another young black filmmaker wants to make a movie that actually has a message, the studios are not like, ah, nah, we're not, we're no, no good there. We don't, that doesn't work. No, black this movie and, is the standard. Yeah, black and blue didn't work, so you know we can't do anything around you know politics, like, whatever that is. We want to make sure that we build this thing out, man, to where whoever steps up next, if it's Ryan Coogler, if it's if it's Antoine Fuqua, if it's somebody like that, yo, I want to really make a film that has this. Yeah, there's no question. Right. That's what we're doing with Black and Blue. So that's yeah. why we need everybody to go out and support the film. Black and Blue in theaters on the 25th of October. And we're we going to have our own screening up here pretty soon. We're going to have our own screening. Yeah. We're going to have, um, as a matter of fact, there's a screen on the 22nd. Okay. And um, I'm going to be giving out free tickets for that. But if you can, man, just show up for us, man. If you want to buy out the theater, reach out to me, man. I'll go half with you. Whatever we need to do, I want to get the whole community in. So if you in South Sacramento, Elk Grove, Oak Park, Del Paso Heights, it don't matter where you at. Grant Line, I don't care. Tell me where you at, man. We gonna go have some buying theaters out. We want to make sure everybody get to go see this movie and have a good time. Absolutely. We gotta show up. We gotta show up on behalf of the brother that we just lost out there in Sacramento. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is how you make the statement. Yes. Exactly. Period. Exactly. You know, again, we ain't talented enough to figure out a way to sell you on coming to see it. We're just saying to you that in success, there's a lot of statements to be made. This is how you change the game. Whistleblowers are the reason that we finally finna get this orange man out the White House. Man, go to bed, man. <laughs>
Man, go to bed, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, my God. Tyrese, oh, my God. Cheeto puffs. Cheeto puffs. Gotta get up out of there, man. <laughs> oh, Tyrese, Deion Taylor, Black and Blue. The movie comes out on the 25th. And we're going we gonna to have some conversations about yes. buying some theaters, for real, for Thank real. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And make sure you check out at Tyrese on Instagram and at Deion Taylor. And matter of fact, I think at Black and Blue Movie At as Black well. and Blue Movie, yeah, man. Go there, check us out, man. Watch the trailer, see everything you want to see. I got a lot of behind the scenes make on both channels. Make sure you all follow at Deion Taylor, man. Yes. We got 17 followers. We got to get them up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Help them out, man. Help them out. Help them out. <laughs> Dion Taylor, <laughs> you gotta get my guy up. He's, he's, he's. He's got seventeen followers, maybe seventeen and a half. I might I got eighteen got today, man. I might be at eighteen. One midget. Oh no, we gotta step the game up for yes. Dion, man. Step the game up for Dion. <laughs> Thank y'all very much, fellas. I appreciate y'all very much, man. For real. Love, T. All Thank right, you, brother. Deal. All right. Love y'all, man. All right.